So let's go ahead and look at um, number 19. So it says log base 8. Log base 8 of t plus 10 minus log base 8 of t minus 1 equals log base 8 of 12. Okay, now I've already seen some students make this mistake, so I gotta make sure this is page number, page 106, question number 19. So I've already seen some students make the mistake, so I wanna make sure I clarify it real quick before any more students make this. I already saw a couple students that say, oh, logarithms, equal sign, okay. They just all cancel out, or they all cross out. And I always say, no, that is not the rule. The rule does not say when you have logarithms on both sides and you have an equal sign, you just cancel out all the logarithms. What the logarithm states is if you have one logarithm equal to another one logarithm, then we know that what the logarithms are equal to with the same base, that what we're evaluating each logarithm is equal to each other. On this left side, ladies and gentlemen, I do not have one logarithm. Yes, they're all to the same base, which is good. But they, here I have two logarithms. So now what I need to do to get those two logarithms to one logarithm, I need to apply the properties of logarithms. And since I see I have a subtraction sign, I know that the properties of logarithms allows me to use the quotient property, which states I can now rewrite this as log base 8 of t plus 10 divided by t minus 1 equals log base 8 of 12. That is called the quotient property. And what it does is it allows us to rewrite the subtractions of two logs with the same base as a quotient of one logarithm. Or the logarithm of the quotient of the two values. Okay? That's the quotient property of logarithms. We wrote down all three properties, right? Anna, do you remember? We wrote down all three properties. All right. So now I have a logarithm equal to another logarithm. Now I can apply the pro equality property of logarithms and say that I'm taking the log of base 8 and the log of base 8, then I know that each one of these expressions are now going to equal each other. So now I have t plus 10 divided by t minus 1 equals dulce. So to finish this up, uh, what I'll need to do now is solve for t. So i got to get like t by itself or do something with it, right? Well, the first thing i got to do is i got to get t off the bottom. Um, Wendy? So, yeah. So I gotta get t off the bottom. So to get t off the bottom, you gotta multiply by t minus one. Now, I'm out on this, I'm multiplying by t minus one, and I'm dividing by t minus one. Therefore, that divides into one, leaving me just with t plus ten equals. Now I can apply distributive property. So I get twelve t minus twelve. Now, to solve, I just simply need to get the t by itself. So I'll subtract the t over here to get the t on the same side. And I get 10 equals 11t minus 12. Add 12 to the other side. And I get 22 equals 11t divided by 11. And I can say t equals 2.